Welcome to the Action Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Action Group. The Action Group is a financial analysis and investment ideas firm. We're located online at www.theoxengroup.com. Um, tonight's Action Group Nightly will be uh, recapping June 7th, Tuesday market wrap up. I'll uh, be looking at a couple new positions we've been looking at and talking about uh, where this market's headed um, and what you can do to prepare for. Um, any kind of potential pullback update on Georgia's corner, extended value portfolio forecast for tomorrow. And as always, please check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a little under the weather, so uh, bear with me. Um, the market moved uh, higher pretty after the fourth day, a uh, four-day pullback um, as the dollar weakened, but uh, actually ended the day in the red again to make our fifth day of losses in a row. Um, all the day's gains were wiped away in about the last 15 minutes of the day um, after Bernanke um, began his speech. Um, I think, I'm not sure what the catalyst was yet. Um, you know, there was, you know, the talk is that he has, he says, accommodative monetary policies are still needed. Uh, what exactly that means? Does that mean QE3? Did that send the market down? Is it that he didn't say we need QE3 today? Um, and people wanted him to say that. Uh, I think that still needs to be sorted out here um, through the after hours. The, but the Bernanke speech definitely was a catalyst for the to move down. Um, and uh, the dollar dropping continued to drop against the euro. Um, you know, the euro showing some strength on the Greeks bailout um, and U.S. weakness. But um, it was really the only thing moving the markets up today. And the Bernanke speech definitely did loom very large. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, the dollar continues its drop, and um, you know, speculation might move all the way back down to here. Um, however, I think Europe's got enough of their own problems, so it's just interesting to see the dollar dropping. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens um, with that. Um, so the market did take a nice gain at the beginning of the day. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little. It's just, it's interesting to watch this market. Um, you know, it really has nothing going on for it right now. And it's, it's sad because uh, the the dollar is just that you can literally watch the ticks of the dollar and watch the ticks of the, da the Dow, just the change. It's just insane. Um, and you saw the dollar strengthen right towards the other day as Bernanke started to speak. I don't know why, but it did happen. Um, we gained early on the back of a drop in the dollar. You know, some a move down in crude prices, helped some retail out. Got some upgrades and downgrades today. Uh, a little bit of uh, M and A with wire. I'm sorry, with um, uh, Temple Inland and uh, International Paper, um, but nothing was able to keep it going after the Bernanke speech started. Fifth down day in a row. When will it stop? <laughs> it's a good question. I wish we would have just dropped to twelve thousand today, and we could have bounced off that level. <coughs> we decided to. Go a little bullish today. Uh, picked up uh, Avalon Rare Metals AVL. Um, we're able to exit half the position for a one and a half percent gain today. Um, but overall, um, definitely uh, cautious about this position. Uh, closed uh, down a little bit from our entry at six seventy six, um, and uh, we were hoping that that this would take off a little bit more today. Um, but the movement late in the market down did sort of. Uh, spurn a little bit of selling, but um, you know, you look at the rare metals and you say, okay, you know, these have had, you know, these had a great run at the beginning of the year. Uh, they've pulled back some now. Now is this the buying time? Um, you know, on the short term side, I like it right now. Um, I, I I need a, a cooperative market though in order for this to happen. But you look at the trend you see in the in the in the metal stocks, and this is a very trend heavy stock. Um, you know, once it starts to get going in a certain direction, it really just takes off in that direction. And we saw the end of a direction today and a revert to a back up. And anytime we've seen multiple red days in a row, more than three, with a black, with a black, um, I'm sorry, with a up day, um, it's tended in the past to mean that Avalon. Uh, would is changing direction. You see here, change. Um, the other ones that we saw was here, um, and that that wasn't a change of direction immediately, but you did see it started to gain support and move higher. 
and um, also the stock has gotten good support at 650. Um, anytime the stock has really come to 650, it started to get support, and once it's broken higher out of 650, this stock has taken off. So I, I see some signs uh, that I like here. <coughs> I see a support line drawn below it. I see support at 650, and I see this stock um, showing support. You look at the rare earth um, prices on the commodities um, exchanges. I mean, they're up 33, 40 percent today. Um, you know. And this stock uh, was up, you know, two and a half percent at the end of the day. So, uh, not even two and a half percent, a little over two percent at the end of the day. Uh, RSI is uh, showing a bottom there. Fast Stochastics looking like they are showing a bottom. That black K line starting to flatten out. The D line definitely moving closer to it. Um, if you get another tick up tomorrow, even flat to tick up, that will definitely cross. And that will be a great buying, a great signal of a buy. We're maybe a little bit early on the stock, but I do think that this is a stock with a lot of potential. Um, <coughs> also, so you look at the diamonds. Um, you know, we, we broke through that price channel um, the other day, and we've talked about that before, um, and we couldn't retake it today. Um, but we do have very good support. It looks like coming in at 120 on the diamonds. Um, you know, that, that support was shown back in April. Um, after and we got that big rally, um, it's coming in here again. But the problem is, is that if this lingering, if we don't start to see any kind of better data, or we don't see something starting to give us that that catalyst, the upside, I do think we will not be able to hold on to that level for much longer. Um, in which case, we could be seeing a very, very large reversal. I'm not going there, and I'm not suggesting that that is going to happen, but I do think you need to see some type of catalyst to get the market going, to get somebody interested in buying things, because right now, I'm still looking at my long-term position, and I'm saying, I don't want to be in any of these right now, or not very many of them, and that's not a good thing. Um, other than that, we did uh, we did have an oil short we closed today for just under 1% gain, kind of got a little bit unlucky there we basically stopped out at the very bottom on that one um, and uh, we you know I've been recommending a lot of positions throughout the day I haven't been taking as many official positions anymore so just be do the market um, and so I've been recommending a lot of recommending a lot of other positions and I and I did like a nice little oil um, hedge trade for tomorrow um, for the price the production increase I, I still think uh, short on the oil buying some USO puts and at the same time, selling some USO, some selling some OIH puts. You know, if you have an increase in production, it's good. It means that there's more supply, which is bad for oil companies. Okay, it brings down the price of oil, but it's good for oil service companies because it means there's more supply. There's more serve. There's more production being done. So it's good for services. So we get a little bit of a hedge there um, on that. I like that. Um, I also recommended a diamonds play towards the end of the day. I, I really had thought that this Bernanke speech would actually be a catalyst to take us up over triple digits. Um, just called that one wrong, I guess. Um, and I do like a couple positions. I think GE, I think McDonald's, I think some of your defensive stocks like this, like Verizon, GE, P&G. I think right now it's a good time to sell some puts on those, get a nice little premium going up for that. Um, I think that if those stocks, if you don't, if you do fill on those, you're getting these stocks a really great value. At the same time, you're getting a nice little chunk of change in your pocket um, from selling the selling the puts. <coughs> uh, George's Corner has no new positions still. Um, uh, remains in Unilever. Um, extended value portfolio. I've been talking about this a little bit with my clients. Um, uh, there is maybe needing the need for an adjustment there. We might need to go a lot more into cash. We're pretty heavy right now into equities versus cash, and I'm thinking. That you know, it's just this is a time when it looks like this might be even an even steeper pullback. I thought that this might be the end of it. Um, I thought 1200, 12,100, and that range would be a really good buying point, but I'm just not seeing anything that makes me excited to buy. And if I'm not excited and I'm one of the most risky traders I know, <laughs> and guarantee that no one else is, so I'm definitely getting a little worried about that. We will have the Home Builder Equity Analytics out tomorrow sometime tomorrow. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the morning, afternoon, evening, but it will be out tomorrow. Uh, for tomorrow, uh, <clears throat> you know, Bernanke really flattened the market, gave up uh, gave up all those gains, just shows a lot of weakness. 
the dollar would be key. I mean, if it continues down, I mean, I guess you can give a little bit of reason why equities might move up tomorrow. Um, but that move is definitely going to be not tied to anything that can be lasting. Um, we do get some data tomorrow with the beige book. I don't see that being very positive. Crude inventories come out tomorrow. And we do get the OPEC meeting. I think if we can get a drop, if we can get OPEC to come out, raise production, we can get a good drop, a, a very solid drop in oil. That could, that could be a little bit of a catalyst for some sectors of the economy that really would help maybe, you know, the tech and the, and the NASDAQ and the Dow, um, some of the components of the Dow, such as uh, retail and, and consumer services and consumer-related products. Um, other than that, though, I, again, I guess I'm very, I'm an optimist at heart and I'm a bull at heart, and it's just, it's a tough time to be that, and uh, you have to realize that if you are that way. Uh, that's going to do it for today. Visit www.theoxygroup.com. Email us, call us, become a part.